malalim na isinasabuhay ng maraming deboto ang kanilang pananampalataya at pagmamahal sa Diyos sa pamamagitan ng kanilang buong pusong paglilingkod. Ito ay isang patotoo na ang biyaya at pagmamahal ng Diyos na laganap at tiyak ay isinasabuhay din ng kanyang mga anak. Dito sa ating dambana, humigit kumulang limang daang deboto ang patuloy na naglalaan ng kanilang oras at nagpapamalas ng kanilang talento sa diwa ng paglilingkod. Ito ay bilang tugon sa mga biyayang kaloob sa atin ng Diyos. Marami sa mga nuoy nagsisimba at nagdedebosyon lamang sa mahal na ina ang nahikayat na maglingkod. Makikita natin sila ngayon sa iba't ibang ministriya dito sa ating dambana. Kaya naman, amin ngayong patuloy na ibinubukas ang pagkakataon para sa mas marami pang deboto na nais maging lingkod dito sa dambana ni Inay Maria. Iba't ibang mga ministriya at grupo ang maaari ninyong piliin ayon na rin sa inyong talento at kakayahan. Narito ang mga ministriya na laging bukas para sa mga nagnanais na maging lingkod dito sa Dambana. Mother Butler's Guild Ministry of Lectors, Commentators, and Psalmists Extraordinary Ministers of the Holy Communion Ministry of Collectors Our Mother of Perpetual Help Altar Servers Redemptorist Music Ministry Ministry of Ushers and Greeters Social Communication and Media Ministry Mangyari pong magpasa ng inyong bio data o resume at mag-fill out ng application form dito sa front office ng ating dambana. Wala po kaming sino mang inaatasan na mangunekta ng inyong mga pribadong impormasyon sa labas ng front office. Ito po ay bilang pangprotekta sa inyong data privacy. Nagagalak kaming makasama kayo sa pampapalaganap ng kabutihan at pagmamahal ng Diyos. Para na't maging debotong lingkod kaisa si Inay Maria, magbahagi ng sarili at maging mga pagpapala sa kapwa. Dahil ang bawat deboto, misunero! Dear brothers and sisters, may I remind you once again to observe our annual Christian celebration of the season of creation. This is an occasion for us to pray and respond together to the cry of creation, not just with fellow Catholics and fellow Christians, but with all people of goodwill. The celebration normally begins on September 1, Feast of Creation, and ends on October 4, the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi, the patron saint of ecology, beloved not just by Christians, but by most ecological advocates who are touched by his spirituality, founded on a profound sense of kinship with all fellow creatures in this world. Well, in 2020, we started to introduce a unique feature of our own Filipino version of this celebration by extending it to the second Sunday of October when we celebrate our National Indigenous People Sunday. Who else are in the best position to teach us of the basic interconnectedness of all creatures but our Indigenous peoples? For this year, the theme for our celebration is to hope and act with creation. And the symbol is the first fruits of hope spoken about by St. Paul in Romans chapter 8, 19 to 25. Let us sustain our reflection on that beautiful passage where the Holy Apostle speaks about all creation groaning in labor pains and reminds us that we ourselves are already enjoying the first fruits of the Spirit and are therefore also groaning within ourselves as we await the fullness 
of God's glory, which is about to be revealed in creation. Pope Francis, in his message for the World Day of Prayer for the Care of Creation in 2024, says, To hope and act with creation then means, above all, to join forces and to walk together with all men and women of goodwill. I therefore recommend that we make this season of creation an occasion for us to renew our sense of kinship with all creation by praying that beautiful prayer in the book of Daniel, chapter 3. Let us think of the furnace of fire in which the three young men walked as a symbol of global warming and climate crisis that the despots of this world are turning the planet Earth into. Together with the prophet and visionary, let us learn to bless the Lord along with the sun and moon, the stars of heaven, the shower and dew, the winds, the nights and days, the lightning and clouds, the mountains and hills, the springs, the seas and rivers, the dolphins and whales, the birds of the air, and all beasts wild and tame. Let us be one with all our fellow creatures in this our common home. Let us praise and exalt our Creator above all forever. This is Bishop Pablo Virgilio David, Bishop of Caloocan and President of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines. taon tuwing ikaunang araw ng Setyembre hanggang ikaapat ng Oktubre, ipinagdiriwang na simbahan ang Season of Creation. Nagsisimula ito sa World Day of Prayer for the Care of Creation sa ikaunang araw ng Setyembre at nagtatapos sa kapistahan ni St. Francis of Assisi na ikaapat ng Oktubre. Ito ay isang espesyal na panahong dedicated to prayer reflection, and celebration of God as the Creator. Sa isang buwan na ito, iniimbitahan tayo to pray and care for creation. Sa pamamagitan ng prayerful reflection on the gifts of creation and the mission given to us by God to care for creation and respond to its needs and crisis today. Ang tema ngayong taon ay to hope and act with creation. Sa kasalukuyan, Marami sa atin ang nakararanas ng tinatawag na echo anxiety dahil sa crisis on climate change, biodiversity loss, and pollution. Ang bawat isa sa atin ay inaanyayahang maging pag-asa sa kabila ng lahat ng ito. We are called to lift the hope inspired by our faith, the hope of the resurrection. Ang tema ay nakabase sa letter of St. Paul to the Romans. It emphasizes that creation is not an object that has been created for human use, but rather a subject that we are called to relate to and collaborate with as fellow creatures. Sa nasabing Bible passages, ipinapakita ang creation na tila isang ina na nasasaktan dahil sa sakit na dulot ng panganganap. Ang nasabing sakit na ito ay dulot ng ating pagtingin sa creation bilang isang resource ng ating mga pangangailangan. Tayo'y nagiging selfish at patuloy na gumagawa ng mga unsustainable ways to live on earth. Ang bawat isa sa atin ay tinatawag to restore the household of God to its full purpose as a nurturing and protected home for all of its inhabitants. Ngayong espesyal na panahong ito, may we all be moved by the spirit of hope. To hope is to trust that our action makes sense even if the result of this action are not immediately seen as people of faith. May we consistently act towards valuing creation as a gift from God. Sa pamamagitan ng ating mga munti, ngunit patuloy na pakikibahagi sa iba't ibang pamamaraan ng pagliligtas sa inang kalikasan. Naway manalig tayo at maging kaisa 
ng sang nilikha. Magandang gabi mga kapatid, mga patalastas. Malugod po namin kayong inaanyayahan na dumalo at makiisa sa mga sumusunod na gawain dito sa pambansang dambana ng mahal na ina ng laging saklolo. Ang Mass with St. Gerard's League sa ikadalawa ng Setyembre, araw ng lunes, sa ganap na alas 9.30 ng umaga at ang Midnight Novena Mass sa ikaapat ng Setyembre, araw ng Merkules, sa ganap na las dose ng hating gabi. Maraming salamat po. May I request everyone to please kneel as we pray the Oratio Imperata for peace. All together, God, our Heavenly Father, Lord of peace and justice, we humbly come before you during this time of escalating geopolitical tensions in our part of the world. Through the years, you have sustained our faith in you as a nation. It is our faith in your divine providence that has made us survive the countless natural and human-caused calamities that have come our way in our history as a people. Spare us, Lord, from the horrors of war. Hear our pleas as we cry out to you. Have mercy on us, Lord. Rescue us from the malevolent forces that influence world leaders. For we believe that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. We pray for our leaders entrusted with making crucial decisions for our nation. We place all our hopes in you, seeking your forgiveness and mercy for the times when our fears and suspicions have tainted our perceptions with ethnic biases and prejudices verging on racism. We earnestly pray, Lord, that you make us instruments of peace. Where there is hatred, let us bring love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, Saint Michael the Archangel, Saint Joseph, Saint Francis of Assisi, Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, Saint Pedro Calungsod, our Mother of Perpetual Help. Please be seated for a moment. Brothers and sisters, today is the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time and the World Day of prayer for the care of creation. Our Mass presider for this evening is Reverend Father Mario Billy Poro, CSSR. May I then invite everyone to join the songs, prayers, and responses in this Mass. Streets of winter gathering. 
In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good evening, my dear brothers and sisters. Good evening, Father. Welcome to the last Mass of the day. And today we celebrate the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. And this Sunday also, today also, we are officially open the season of creation. An invitation for us to hope and to act with all the creation. So let us begin this Eucharist by realizing all of our sinfulness before God and we ask God's forgiveness so that we can celebrate this memorial of faith. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
glory to God. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our heart the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. For we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who live and reign with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now, Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I enjoin upon you, you shall not add to what I command you, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully, for thus will you give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations, who will hear all, all these statutes and say, this great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord our God? Is it to us whenever we call upon Him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are just as this whole law which I am setting before you today? 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Justice, we live in the presence of the Lord. All who does justice, we live in the presence of the Lord. Whoever walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue. Who harms not his fellow man, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the Lord. Who lends not his money at usury and accepts no bribe against the innocent, whoever does these things shall never be disturbed. A reading from the letter of St. James. Dearest brothers and sisters, all good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. He will to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this. to care for orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Father willed us to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord.
When the Pharisees with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples, after some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed. The purification of cups and jugs and kettles and baths. So the Pharisees and scribes question him, why do, you, why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, Well, did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person. But the things that come out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, disease, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, fully. All these evils come from within and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, um, who among you, especially the women, just for the women, who among you women who came here in this church this evening without putting your makeup on. Raise your hand if you did. Ah, there is one here. So you, you didn't put your makeup on, right? That's good. Interest. It's really, I'm not saying possible, but it's really hard for women to leave their house without putting their makeup on, especially when they are going outside. Like going to the mall, going to the church, or going to the public area. It's really, imp not impossible, I mean, it's really hard for a woman to do that. But dear brethren, if we look back on these days, especially in these last few weeks, the gospel always talk about Jesus who criticized the Pharisees and the scribes. And if you look carefully on Jesus' critics, on those guys, the Pharisees and the scribes, if we look carefully on Jesus' critics, it's always about Jesus who critics the Pharisees and the scribes about the difference between their attitude and what is really inside their heart. Or we can say the motivation. The scribes and the Pharisees, they really try to manipulate people. They really try to show themselves like good people, holy people. You know, they pray everywhere. They pray in the synagogue, in the church. They even pray in the marketplace. But actually, it's not their motivation. They try to project themselves as good as they can. But actually, that is not their motivation. They just want to gain some profit and acknowledgement from people that they are good people, that they are holy. Or in other words, we can say that the scribes and the Pharisees, they try to put their makeup on and they are hiding behind their mask. They are hiding something 
inside their hearts. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, we are living in this world, in the world where our physical appearance, our outward appearance really matter the most. That is why I'm asking you such question for. Of course, it's all necessary. We need all of them. We need that. But try to ask yourself, ask yourself, how much money you spend for all the makeup, all the clothes, and everything else you buy to beautify yourself. Ask yourself, how much you spend your money to buy all of them. And if you spend a lot of it, a lot of money to a lot of money to buy all of those things to beautify yourself. Then the second question for us is, how much did you spend to beautify your inner self? Have you ever thought about that? Or another question, what did you do to beautify your heart? I do believe this is the main point of Jesus' critics in today's gospel we just heard. My dear brethren, I'm not saying that, this is important, I'm not saying that all the makeup, all the clothes, and everything that we buy to beautify ourselves is not important. I'm not saying that. What I'm trying to say is about priority. This is what Jesus wants to emphasize to us today. Priority. Well, it's good, you know, to buy everything to put your makeup on, to buy some new clothes, new pants, and everything else. But this again about priority. Spend time, spend your money, spend your energy to something more important. Beautify your inner side first. Beautify your heart. Because this is the source of all our motivation comes from. Put something more deciding first in our life. Give more time to something more important. Give more attention to something that can lead us to salvation. If you have time to take care of your physical appearance, your outward appearance, the question for us is, do you have time to take care of your inner side? Do you have time to fix your heart? That's such a big question for us to reflect. My dear brethren, give time to beautify your heart because that's our inner self. That's the place where God stays. An action can only be an truthful action if it comes from the pure heart and pure motivation. Amen. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God. The Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Prayer of the faithful, let us call upon our Father to cleanse our hearts and mind so that we may render him sincere worship and be filled with his grace. With humble hearts, 
we all respond, Hear us, O loving Father. Hear us, O loving Father. For Francis, our Pope, Jesse, our Bishop, our priests and deacons, may their way of life be consistent to the sacraments they celebrate, we pray. Hear us, O loving Father. For those who find their life burdensome, may they unite their sufferings and pains with Jesus and be comforted by their families and communities, we pray. Hear, Hear us, us, O loving Father. For all of us gathered, may we truly offer our whole mind and heart to the Lord as part of our true worship, we pray. Hear, Hear us, us, O loving Father. For our beloved dead, may the Lord show them great care and raise them up to eternal life, we pray. Hear us, O loving Father. For those who offered Masses to be celebrated in the National Shrine of our Mother Perpetual Help, may God answer their petitions and hear their thanksgiving, we pray. Hear us, O loving Father. Father, may we worship you with our whole hearts. Hear the praise of your faithful people as we promise that the graces we shall receive will always be offered for your greater glory. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates celebrate in mystery, it may accomplish in power. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world, that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer, to live like us in all things but sin so that you might love in us what you love in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, and so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the one of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jesse, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Mother of perpetual health, with Saint Joseph, his blessed, his blessed spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As the Savior command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. With a gracious life, heart, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Renewed by the spread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm us our hearts and steer us to serve you in our neighbor. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the weakness of your devoted people steal your compassion, O Lord, we pray, and let their faithful pleading win your mercy, that what they do, what they do not presume upon by their merits, they may receive by your generous pardon. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, our Mass is over. Let us go to proclaim the goodness of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 